Hi Dreamers, my last full portfolio update was in September and I try to do one every quarter. So here's my last one for the year. Today, I'll take you through my full stock portfolio that generates an incredible $83,000 in dividend income. I'll cover all the up-to-date changes, how that compares to where it was at the end of last quarter. And at the end, I'll share another confession that I've been keeping from you, plus my plan for 2023. So let's dive in. All right, here we are in my spreadsheet. And just to quickly orient you, I've got the ticker symbol, description, quantity of shares I own, last stock price, next X date and pay date, the amount per share, the current yield, current total value in my accounts, the estimated dividend annual income, which sector, geography. And this is my bonus section where I share with you whether or not it's a dividend king with 50 plus years of dividend growth, a dividend US aristocrat with 25 years of dividend growth, a dividend contender with between 10 and 24 years of dividend growth, or whether or not it's a Canadian dividend aristocrat or a UK dividend king. And as I go through the list, I'll cover which ones in my portfolio have actually kicked off Christmas gifts in the last 60 days with amazing dividend raises. So let's dig in. Starting the list, I've got ticker symbol MO Ultria. I've got 3,461 shares, which I have not increased at all. I've completely got the drip turned off so that it serves as a cash machine for the rest of my portfolio. I can't wait for this next January 10th payout date. With a yield of 8%, I've got over $160,000 worth, making me about $13,000 a year. And of course, Mo is a dividend king. And holy smokes, another huge tobacco position. BTI with 3,636 shares and a payout at the beginning beginning of February, that'll help fund my Valentine's Day plans. With $150,000 in position, this UK king gives me over $10,000 in annual income. And the next position is BCE. I've also got over 3,000 shares of it with 3,169 shares and another big payout in January at a 5.85 yield, almost $150,000 worth. And BCE generates over $8,500 in annual dividend income. It's a wonderful, Canadian telecom dividend aristocrat. And the last dividend increase for BCE was just over 5%. Fantastic. My next position is IBM. They have been on an amazing run this year with a turnaround that I talked about way earlier in the year. I've got 715 shares, which at an almost 4.5% yield gives me just over $100,000 and generates $4,712 a year. And of course, IBM is a dividend contender. Next, we have Philip Morris, another and the last of my big tobacco holdings. 736 shares there at a 5% yield gives me $75,000 and generates about $3,741 a year. And Philip Morris is a dividend contender. Now switching over to real estate, I've got ticker symbol O, Realty Income, my favorite read. And I've got 1,161 shares and about $75,000 here. So that generates almost 3,500 bucks. Now, you know, in 2022, there was a lot of drama around tea as they had the Discovery spinoff. And you're probably aware I sold off a little bit of a tranche of tea just over the last 60 days. And that's because I wanted to further diversify down my list and bring a little bit more growth into the mix. But hey, still a big tranche in tea, 3,274 shares with $62,000 generating $3,631. The next one is rock solid Pfizer with over a thousand shares. Pfizer gives me almost $1,700 and is a dividend contender. And one of my physicians that gave me a Christmas gift of a 2.5% dividend increase. Thanks Pfizer. The next position is another healthcare giant, Avvi. And AbbVie also gave me an awesome Christmas gift, a 5% increase in dividends. So with 287 shares, I've got almost $47,000 worth and it generates about $1,700. AbbVie is a great stock and a dividend king. And to round out my top 10 positions, I've got Verizon with just over 1,050 shares and almost $40,000 worth. Verizon is giving me $2,758 in dividend income. And did you know that they 
we are dividend contender. So one thing you'll notice in my top 10 positions is how packed it is with dividend aristocrats, dividend kings, and dividend contenders. And that's just one way I try to manage risk a little bit. So let's move on. The next position I have is BNS, and with 726 shares and a nice 6% yield, BNS is delivering almost $2,200 a year. Manu Life, the insurance company, is my next position, and I'm approaching 2,000 shares here. With a 5.5% yield, I'm getting about $1,930 from Manu Life. So the next position is IAPR, and with just over 300 shares and over a 6% yield, this REIT is generating just over $2,200. I've got Chevron with over 200 shares, generating just over $1,100. Duke Energy with 340 shares, generating $1,367. Another nice dividend contender. And here's my position on Bend, Franklin Resources, with 1,077 shares. This dividend aristocrat is at a 4.3% yield. And I get just over $1,200. Starward Property is the next position at 1276 shares and an eye popping 9.6% yield. This little position is generating almost $2,500. Microsoft is my next position with just over 100 shares and it doesn't generate very much annual income, so it's mostly a growth position, as you know. Avigo is my next position, and another stock that gave me an early Christmas gift of over 12% dividend increase. Freaking fantastic. Not only is this a high growth stock, but it's a dividend contender and generates almost $700 a year at an almost 3.5% yield. Love in that position. Then I've got CFG, a financial company with 477 shares, generating about $800. MetLife, which believe it or not, has been one of my absolute best performers of the year that no one talks about. And at 258 shares, this little position generates over $500. Now you probably know if you watched my ETF video that SCHD is one I really like and I've been building up this position, especially over the last quarter. So right now I've got 231 shares. It's at a 3.3% yield. I've got about $17,500 and it generates just over $700 a year. And SCHD also gave me a Christmas gift because it's now up to just over 70 cents a share. Awesome. WPC is my next position, a great little REIT with 215 shares, almost $17,000 worth. It generates just over $900. A nice REIT that is also a dividend contender. DAG is my next position with just over 450 shares. It's generating just over $650 a year. And GOOD is yet another REIT with almost $15,000 there, it's generating just over $1,175. Next, I've got BST, and with its high 9.66 yield, I'm getting just over $1,375 from this ETF. Next is SJR, with just over 500 shares. I love this little monthly payer, and the only reason why I've been taking it down recently is just to rotate into bigger upside opportunity. But this is one that just keeps on ticking very bond-like. And so, with just over 3.4% yield, it's generating around $470. Another ETF I've been building up is Devo. Now I've got 383 shares there at a 4.7% yield, and that's giving me just over 650 bucks. Sunoco is one of my rare energy positions, and with just over 300 shares and a 7.6% yield, I'm getting just above $1,000 a year from them. And this position, Pepsi, rounds out my top 30 positions. With 65 shares and almost $12,000, I'm getting about $300 from Pepsi. Pepsi is a solid company with great growth and a dividend aristocrat. So with that being my top 30, I've got about 74 total holdings. So let's go through what I call the long tail, the smaller holdings in my position. The first of which is AQN. And there's been a lot of conversation about AQN and the potential that they might cut their dividend over the next few quarters. That's something that I'm looking at. It's something to be mindful of if you're thinking about adding additional quantities to this position. For now, I'm a hold at just over 1,600 shares and a whopping 10% yield. EQN is generating almost $1,200 a year. And in the past, 
has been a Canadian dividend aristocrat. Next, I have another power company in the southern United States. There's 154 shares here, generating about $400 a year. The next one's MPW, a new holding and REIT that I covered in my recent video on what I've been buying recently. It's got a shocking 9.6% yield, so at $10,000, it's generating almost $1,000 a year for me. I see MPW as kind of a medium term hold. In other words, I'll hold it for the next few years and then reevaluate. Next, I have Prudential with almost 1,000 shares there, a dividend contender generating just about $450 for me. Next, I have Janice Henderson, JHG, just over $9,000 thousand dollars here generating almost six hundred dollars and another new favorite of mine fortis and i've been building up fortis now i have 230 shares just over nine thousand dollars generating three hundred eighty dollars and fortis also gave me an early christmas gift with a 5.6 percent dividend increase i've got just over nine thousand dollars worth of texas instruments generating 257 dollars a year just over nine thousand dollars in johnson and johnson a dividend king generating just over 230 dollars a year a relatively new position in bmo a large canadian bank generating $377 a year, and also a Canadian dividend aristocrat, and just under $8,000 from public storage, generating about $212. GSK was a UK dividend king, and recently removed due to a spinoff and dividend cut in 2022, similar to AT&T. I've got almost 150 shares there, generating just under $240 a year. I've got 33 shares of Apple, generating only about 30 bucks a year. A position in Procter & Gamble, generating $100 a year. Another Canadian bank, Canadian Imperial, generating $230 a year. And here's another REIT that gave me an early Christmas gift with a dividend increase of 4.9% from Getty. Next, we have FRT, a rare REIT dividend king, generating $138 a year, followed by EBF, also generating $138 a year. And now you're seeing some of the long tail positions that I have, some of which are new growth, some of which are new REITs, and some are a little bit experimental. Because as I've talked about before, sometimes I gain a small foothold just to evaluate and see how I like holding it before I decide that it's a more permanent position to my portfolio. And so we've got TELUS, a Canadian communication giant, PFG, a large financial company, Qualcomm, a chip maker, of course UPS, that I'm sure you're seeing outside your front door every day now. A brand new position for me, Sun Life Financial, an insurance company from Canada. Abbott Labs, another huge healthcare company, which also gave me another early Christmas gift of 8.5% dividend increase. Thanks, Abbott. I've got about $2,000 in Lowe's and another $2,000 in Cisco Systems. McKesson has been a monster growth engine and one that I'd like to continue to add to. Very happy with that pickup. I've got about $2,000 in General Mills. And here's my bond ETF. I get, a, I get about $124 from BBN. I've got about $1,700 in Nextra Energy, a, a relatively new position in Apple Hospitality, which I also covered in my recent buy video, and about $1,500 in BMY, which also gave a Christmas gift of 5.6% dividend increase recently. Cintas is another new position I've started to test out, followed by ORI Old Republic, Mondelez, a food company, and Cardinal Health, another great growth opportunity. Prologis, a commercial REIT, was another recent pickup, followed by Genuine Parts, and another monster growth company of UNH, United Healthcare Group. And to round out my last positions, I've got SPHD, an ETF, Toronto Dominion Bank, QQQX, ADP, another relatively new pickup for me, and gave a 20% dividend increase recently. Wow, ADP. And my last positions are HIW, a live, work, play REIT, and RY, Royal Bank of Canada. And that's the portfolio, resulting in 33,701 shares with an average dividend yield of 5.45%, a total value right now of $1.53 million, and an estimated annual income, a patty, if you will, of $83,238.56. 
And you can see how that compares to September with a just over 6% yield. And that's because the total value of everyone's portfolio had gone down a bit, but the patty was much lower at $81,614. And the other thing you may have noticed in this whole thing is just how packed with kings, aristocrats, contenders, and the like throughout the entire portfolio. And so a couple of other ways to look at this is diversity by sector. And here you can see over $250,000 in communications or telecom, over 400,000 in consumer staples, which is part of that super defensive position I've been talking about. A much lower position in energy, a lot of which is because I've been selling off a bit at these high prices. A growing piece of the pie, which is just ETFs, at almost $50,000, over $200,000 in financials, $122,000 in healthcare, $170,000 in IT, $185,000 in real estate, and about $67,000 in utilities or electric, and then a couple of really small other slices. And then in terms of geography, we've got 66% US and about 18% Canadian, which is exactly the same as I've had all year long with an increased percentage of UK, most of which is BTI, and then some other international, which for now is mostly Philip Morris. And one of the biggest downside risks of this is just the currency exchange. So that's something to be aware of if you have a lot of international holdings. And another way to look at a portfolio like this is what I call my long tail strategy with about 50% of the holdings in the top 10 and another 50% of the holdings in the bottom 60 or so. And that provides another counterbalance in terms of diversity and risk. And there it is, my friends, $83,238.56 of completely passive income. So, at the beginning, I promised to tell you about another confession and my plan for 2023. So here it is. You know that I experimented with a six month sabbatical at the beginning of the year from January to June. But from June to December, my next confession is that I've only been working about three days a week. I took a six month gig that only sold some of my time and really it's been just enough to pay the bills. That has been a shocking change from my normal past life as an executive. And that has actually caused my friends and family to worry that I'm not okay. Now, of course, I am okay. I'm more than okay. In fact, <laughs> in fact, I'm freaking fantastic but none of them know that I'm doing this channel and they have no idea about my dividends either. So they are just confused as they continue about their lives going to work every day. So what's my plan for 2023? Well, this California gig is likely to end in December. Yeah, in like two weeks. And then I have no idea, no idea. It's like the sidewalk just ends. I expect I will just walk to the edge of the plank and take a look around. Can you imagine someone as planful as me having no sight past the next two weeks? How would you feel? Would you be afraid? Would you be stressed? I am not. What's the worst case? My dividends will fund the whole year combined with the emergency funds I've got. And it's possible old clients will ask me to do something. Best case is that I take a risk on doing something new and a new sidewalk appears. That's the power of dividends. For the next couple of weeks, I'm going to start to ponder a more freestyle 2023 plan and perhaps I'll even share it with you. And that's what I ultimately hope for you, the power to have a freestyle plan every single day. So your guess is as good as mine for what I will do in 2023. And if you have a guess, leave it for me in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this dividend portfolio update. And as always, I encourage you to do your research, then implement and learn by putting it into practice. As a reminder, I'm not a financial advisor. So keep in mind these videos are for entertainment and inspiration only. I'll see you on the flip side.